to all of you brave souls who came out in this weather to be here at Mary's beautiful shrine. As Father Greg mentioned, the theme for today is Our Lady of Lourdes. This theme is chosen because Wednesday of this week, February the 11th, we celebrate the feast day of Our Lady of Lourdes. Between February 11th and July 16th, 1858, our Blessed Mother appeared 18 times to St. Bernadette. She appeared in a town of Lourdes. Many of us are familiar with the story of the apparitions because of the movie, The Song of Bernadette, or perhaps reading the book, The Song of Bernadette. Lourdes is a wonderful, wonderful place. I can speak about it this morning from personal experience because one of my greatest responsibilities at St. John's University as university chaplain is to lead a service pilgrimage each year for 10 days to Lourdes. And so since 2008, I have been privileged to go there with 12 college students each year. Students are engaged there in service. They work in the baths, the piscines. The young men work at the train stations, greeting the pilgrims, helping them off of the trains, helping them to get to the residences where they are staying. And in the evenings, they work in the rosary procession. And so this morning, I'd really just like to share with you a little bit about my own personal experience in Lourdes. And the way to do that is to, in a sense, give you just simple snapshots of some of the places in Lourdes. Many of you maybe have been there, and so your reflections might be similar to my own, your memories might be similar. When one goes to Lourdes, you're attracted immediately to the grotto, that sacred place where Mary appeared to Bernadette. This cave-like cut out of the rock, this little area where Mary appeared to Bernadette. You notice it's a place of quiet. It's a place of prayer. It's a place where people will kneel on the, on the hard concrete and pray. It's a place where people find benches to sit and pray. It's a place where people will just sit on the, uh, on the ground and maybe lean against a tree or a wall, just simply to be there in that sacred spot. Each time as I walk through the, the grotto area, I'm reminded of the cave of Bethlehem, this shelter where Jesus was born, where heaven touched earth. And I'm reminded that this grotto also provides shelter for Mary when heaven once again came to earth and Mary appeared to Bernadette. As people walk through the grotto area, they often will touch the rock. They'll rub their hand against the stone, so much so that this rough stone has become smooth in many places as people rub their hand against it. I think we do so instinctively because it reminds us that God is our rock. As we touch that wall, it says to us, God is always present for us. God is always there for us. God is our rock, our refuge. God is the one in whom we can place all of our hope. And as we circle around and come out of the grotto, you turn and see the statue of Mary, statue of just where Mary herself stood when she talked to Bernadette. And underneath the statue, those words where Mary identified herself, I am the Immaculate Conception. And so many of us who wear the miraculous medal, as we look at that statue and read those words, I am the Immaculate Conception, we just naturally pray as the medal tells us, pray for us who have recourse to you, that Mary is there for us, interceding for us. As you come out of the grotto, you're immediately, your eyes are drawn to the candles. There are thousands and thousands of candles that are there before the grotto. And each of those candles represents a secret, a prayer, a request. Someone has lit that candle and put it there and poured out 
their heart to God through Mary's intercession. Maybe they're struggling with a physical illness. Maybe they're, they're accompanying their loved one who is struggling with an illness. Maybe they're having deep financial problems. Maybe they have demons of their own. Maybe they're addicted to different things. Whatever it is that they're struggling with, maybe they've gotten their lives caught up in sinful habit. Whatever it is, they pour out those prayers, those petitions into those candles and place them there before Mary and ask Our Lady to intercede with her son to help them with whatever it is that they're struggling with. Those candles also so often carry with them the prayers of those who were left at home, those who were not able to come to Lourdes. I know each year when I go, I put on my Facebook account. Yes, I have a Facebook account. I put on there, I'm going to Lourdes. If you have any intention that you want me to bring to Lourdes, just let me know what it is. And it is amazing to me the number of requests that I have on the, on the Facebook. People saying, Father, when you get to Lourdes, can you remember my uncle who has cancer? Can you remember my sister who's about to have a baby? Can you remember me because I'm struggling with an addiction to drugs? Whatever it is, people pour out those intentions. And so many of those candles represent those intentions that people bring to Lourdes. As you also look at those candles, it seems to me that there's a great image there in the light and darkness. How often in the scriptures are we reminded so often, especially in John's gospel, of the world being in darkness and sin. And into that darkness and slavery of sin, the light of Christ breaks in, bringing deliverance, bringing healing, a light that overcomes the darkness. And so often in Lourdes, as you process in the evening in the rosary procession, as it begins to get darker and darker, people light their candles and hold those candles up. And you see this amazing array of light breaking into the darkness of the night, reminders of the light of Christ always overcoming the darkness of sin in our world the light of Christ always there to deliver us and to help us in all that enslaves us. And as you continue a little further, you see the chapel of the Blessed Sacrament, a place where all the pilgrims come. People just sit quietly before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament because Lord's is a place of prayer. It's a place where people come to be with God it's a place where those who are sick pour out their prayers to God for whatever healing they desire. It's a place where caregivers come who ask God for the patience that they need, the, the strength that they need to continue to be good caregivers. It's a place where so many other pilgrims come to ask our Lord to help them to live good Christian lives, to let the gospel light shine through them in the way that they live their life. And so they will spend time before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, just quietly in prayer. And finally, coming around to the Reconciliation Chapel, this beautiful chapel where confessions are heard from morning to night in all different languages. No matter what language you speak, there will be a priest there to help you with reconciliation. And so often we discover that whatever healing it is that we need inside of us, God's grace is trying to break in, but we put an obstacle there. We put something in the way, a roadblock. It, it, maybe it's, it's uh, an inability to forgive someone. Maybe it's a grudge that we hold. And it's only when we come to reconciliation, it's only when we stand honestly before the Lord and acknowledge who we are and let go of those hurts and injuries, to let go of those sinful ways, it's then that God's light is able to break into our hearts and lives and bring healing. And so that Reconciliation Chapel is so important in Lourdes. It's a central piece of Lourdes. 
Lourdes is a place of prayer. It is a place of healing. It is a place of restoration of your spirits. But basically, it is a place of peace. It is a place of joy. It is a place where the values of this world are so often reversed when we look around and say, who is famous in our society? It's usually people who are strong. It's people who have money. It's people who have clout. When you go to Lourdes, the most important people are the sick. The most important people are the aged. The most important people, the people that have the pride of place always, who always go to the front of the line, are those who are in wheelchairs, those who are struggling with life because we're told that life is valuable, that suffering has meaning, that suffering is not just a drudgery, a financial drain, but rather those who are sick teach us so much and help us so much. I'd like to end this morning with just a, a personal story, a story of a woman that I accompanied to Lourdes, a woman who was a teacher and a principal a woman who I admired so much because she was so intelligent, she was so able to do so much, she was an outstanding leader of a school. She developed a brain tumor, and little by little, that tumor was affecting her. Her motor skills began to disappear, her speech got slurry, and more and more she was troubled she was troubled because she would say, Father, people look at me and they don't know really who I am. They don't really know what I did. They don't know what I can offer. All they see is, is this body that's slowly losing so much. And we went to Lourdes together and she was very restful. She was not really in the spirit as, as I had hoped she would be in Lourdes. But throughout the experience, as we together went through the rosary procession, as she went down into the baths, the piscines, little by little, I could see that her spirit was changing. And when we came home, she said to me, Father, on this trip, I was cured. And I looked at her and I thought, wait a minute, you're not cured. You look just like you did when we went over. And she said, I was cured, I was healed. She said, I struggled, struggled so much about moving from being a caregiver to a care receiver. I couldn't let it go. And when I went to Lourdes, I found such a sense of peace. I found a sense of purpose. My purpose now is to allow other people to serve me and to help me. And that helps them to be better people. I found healing in Lourdes. Everyone who comes to Lourdes finds a healing in whatever way it is that God wishes to touch them. I mention all of these things because we have them here, right here in Mary's Shrine. We come here and pour out our needs to God through Mary's intercession. We have the opportunity to light those candles that remind us of our intentions. We have the opportunity for reconciliation in these confessionals around this shrine. We have the opportunity to ask God to heal us through Mary's intercession. And so as we prepare to celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes, may we be reminded that God is our rock, our strength. He is always with us. He deeply cares about each of us and he has sent his mother to remind us of his love for us, his care for us. And so it is with confidence that we can come here today and every Monday and pour out our needs to God, confident that Mary will place them in God's hands and that healing will come to us in whatever way it is that we ask.